Hello and welcome back to the channel. One medium sized transit system here in BC went about doing what it normally does, transport people from point A to point B. But little do others know, this humble transit system known as Victoria Regional Transit System would become a leading innovator in public transit systems in Canada and the US by the turn of the millennium. They have been well known for their creativity, from pioneering in low floor accessibility to buying used fear boxes on Facebook, saving $300,000 in the process. Yeah, no kidding, look it up. In this video, we will be exploring three scenarios where this small transit system would lead entire nations and in innovations for public transportation. If you like transit related content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Let's begin. Number one on our list is low floor accessibility. By the time the 1980s rolled around, all transit buses featured steps to get on board. This was also the time new buses were being installed with newly developed wheelchair lifts. Enter this Dutch company, who in the late 1980s worked with Canadian manufacturer New Flyer to produce a prototype of a bus which would not need steps to get on board. And by 1991, the first production low floor transit buses were produced, and the rest was history. After a few units went off to airport shuttle services, Victoria Transit System placed an order for the first nine units of the new D40LF model produced by New Flyer. These buses featured a ramp, which would unfold onto the curb to allow people with mobile aids to roll onto the bus easily without the use of those fidgety wheelchair lifts. These ramps were considerably faster than their lift-equipped counterparts, speeding up bus routes and transit services. The buses were a success, and the D40LF and New Flyer's low floor line became the signature North American transit bus model throughout the early 2000s. Between 1991 and 2001, more than 550 D40LF units would operate in BC alone, with more than four-fifths of that in service in the Vancouver area. Though revolutionary at the time, the wheelchair ramp is now an ADA requirement and is found on every transit bus built since the late 2000s here in Canada and the US. None of the original 9 D40LF units remain, but a 1996 variant is preserved by the Transit Museum Society here in Vancouver, a non-profit organization which aims to preserve the history of transit buses in the province. Now for a lesser known lead in innovation, this time in the way in which buses are powered. Number two on our list is buses powered by a diesel electric hybrid system. By 2002, New Flyer had fallen behind American manufacturer Gillig in the race to develop a mass-produced transit bus powered by a hybrid diesel electric system. So leading up to 2004, New Flyer worked with GM Allison to develop a mass-produced diesel electric hybrid bus. The main feature of these buses is regenerative braking in which the bus produces electricity as it's coming to a stop. This allows the bus to use weaker engines and in turn reduce emissions. Promotional note material from the rollout phase states that the buses were projected to save almost 60% on fuel consumption. And so in 2004, the first mass produced hybrid transit buses for a Canadian transit system would be built for BC Transit. Six hybrid units based on the D40LF model, designated as DE40LF, DE for hybrid, would be part of the testing ground for a technology that would be later seen in many parts of Canada and the United States. Three units would be sent out to Kelowna, while the remaining three would get sent out to Victoria. These buses are easy to tell apart from their diesel counterparts. On top of the bus, there's a small box on the roof which is used to store the batteries. These boxes are also smaller than what you would find on a CNG bus. And as an aside, King County Metro in nearby Seattle would place an order for more than 200 units of the articulated variant, the DE60LF. Today, the hybrid bus is a staple in many transit bus fleets in Canada and the US, with the big three of transit bus manufacturers producing hundreds of hybrid buses each year. The hybrid bus also led to a spike in innovation for transit bus propulsion, as CNG and battery-powered buses would make their way onto the scene in North America and increase in number in other places around the world by the turn of the 2020s. 
As for Victoria and the rest of BC, only three of the six original units remain in regular operation. For neighboring TransLink, Novabus has taken care of all standard hybrid units since 2009, while New Flyer has largely been responsible for hybrid articulated units also since 2009. So now we've touched on accessibility and propulsion. Now we will touch on our third topic, capacity. By 1998, the 70 Swartz Bay Ferry Express route had gained popularity for foot passengers taking a day trip out to Victoria, and the transit system was looking for creative ways to increase capacity on this lifeline connecting the ferries, the town of Sydney, and the province's capital. That year, the agency approved the notion to purchase 11 double-decker buses from British manufacturer Dennis as a cheaper alternative to low floor articulated buses, of which the first accessible variants were just making their way off the production line in Winnipeg. Hence, they were not readily available at the time the decision was made. Meanwhile, for these double-deckers, the order was delayed by two years, mainly because this was the first time the manufacturer had ever dealt with an order for a public transit agency in North America. Secondly, Victoria saw the successful implementation of low floor accessibility, but could not yet translate that into a model with higher capacity. Eventually, the buses were a success and started service in 2000 after several rounds of modifications and testing. The 11 units began work on the 70, but soon found their way onto other routes, such as the 14 and 15 serving the University of Victoria. This unique approach to adding capacity was a success and resulted in additional units purchased through 2008. But by the time Dennis became Alexander Dennis in 2004, the Enviro 500 model became the North American de facto standard for transit double-decker buses, with many examples running in Las Vegas, Seattle, the Bay Area in California, Vancouver, Edmonton, Toronto, and Ottawa. The very first bus, 9001, holds historical significance in transit bus development. As of October 2021, it has been sent back to the UK for a factory refurbishment in preparation for its eventual send-off to a museum in the US. We do not know exactly which museum it will end up, but there will be a pinned comment once an update comes out. So who knew that a transit system with only 50 routes would set the stage for innovation in Canada and the US? In this video, we looked at how Victoria Transit System was literally the testing ground for accessibility, alternative fuels, and capacity. Has your transit system pioneered a transit technology that would become a nationwide standard? Leave it in the comments. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.